All right, so there's an anchor brush update. If you don't know what an anchor brush is, you could go to my channel and then click on the ZBrush 2023 What's New playlist and scroll down. There's an anchor brush video. And you should totally do that and, you know, smash that like and subscribe. But I'm going to talk about base anchor brush functionality because the functionality is pretty easy. But there's some updates in here that are uh, really interesting and there, it does add some more nuance on top of the original anchor brush functionality. So hit the B button on your keyboard, hit A to narrow it down to the A brushes. And then you see there's only one in there, anchors, and then you can hit N or select it. Uh, you have options in here, move, rotate, move, rotate, scale, inflate, and twist. And the base functionality, if we choose rotate, for example, we can click one part of our dog that drops a dot, click another part of our dog that drops another dot. And then with rotate selected, uh, if this is gonna be our anchor and we rotate this one, it's basically going to have an, a gradient of influence from zero to 100 between those two dots. And then everything below that dot will be 100% influenced. It may not make a lot of sense, but I think you'll get it when you see this. If I rotate this, Basically, it anchors here, so anything above this point is going to stay put. Um, everything below this point will move along, and then everything in between here will have a gradient of, like, again, 0 to 100% influence. So, again, this will be more apparent visually as we continue through. Uh, so one of the first updates you'll notice is when I did that, when I rotated this, it didn't try to grab another piece of the mesh over here. It actually stayed right there on the leg. So this new version of Anchor Brush does a pretty good job of knowing, kind of understanding what you're trying to do. I want to bend this leg here, and then I want to bend this leg here. It, it can get in a bad state still. For example, I'm snapped to the side of the dog, and I'm going down the leg, and I want to click here and click here. They're nice in a line. If I go to the side here, you'll see they're pretty lined up. So ZBrush has a pretty good idea of what I want to do. However, if I click here, for example, and then I go and click on this side, and then I go back to the side and rotate, this plane right here is kind of throwing ZBrush off. It doesn't quite know what I want to do. So if that does happen, usually all you have to do is just go through here and just line these things up, and then, okay, it, it'll rotate just fine. More base functionality. If you want that bigger gradient of influence, so instead of putting the dots really close together and rotating the leg, you can put a dot here and then another dot down here. And then when you rotate this part, you're gonna remember between these two dots is zero influence for the anchor, uh, zero to 100% down to this anchor and then 100% below this. So now this, all of this is gonna bend along with it because we've increased that length of that gradient of influence along that line. Uh, but again, if you put the dots close together, this is where that gradient of influence is. It's very small. So then, you know, it's basically just bending a thing, right? So update number one, instead of having to go through here and mask other areas of the object and rotate stuff so I wouldn't grab these pieces, it's pretty smart. It'll kind of understand what you're trying to do as you're trying to rotate your object around. Now, I should mention, you know, if you want to have a crisper transition, again, you're chain you're narrowing that gradient of influence in here so this will be a much sharper transition between those two another thing you can do is change your resolution so right now i'm at subdivision level three the less verts i have the softer that transition is going to be so as we're doing this see how it's kind of a nice it's a really soft transition because there's not that many verts as i increase the vert count over here you'll see that added resolution is giving you a tighter result Let's talk about some other functionality. If I hold down Alt, I can delete dots if I want to. Of course, you can just keep clicking and it'll go through and just create new dots as you go. Uh, but again, you can hold down Alt and uh, get rid of dots. Also, if you have dots drawn, uh, it's kind of a finesse move, but if you start moving it and then hold down Control, it'll grab it and move it into the mesh. You don't really need to do this. Again, if I'm just bending stuff, I've found that just kind of going, again, going down the side and uh, switching this back to rotate. You know, it does a pretty good job. I don't have to have these centered on the object necessarily, but you can if you want to, holding down control. Now, let's talk about focal shift. So, uh, again, we'll switch over here to, you know, let's do inflate. So, I've got an arm here, a dog arm, and I'm going to click the top of the arm here and the bottom of the arm here. By default, the focal shift is set to 100, and this is the the desired outcome is essentially, again, it's going to anchor this. So everything above this point is going to be anchored. It's going to be a 0% value change. Uh, between these two dots is 0 to 100% influence. So as I go and I inflate this, you're going to see, okay, this is 50% inflate in here. And then it gets down to 100% inflate. And then everything past this point gets 100% inflate. Here's the interesting part. 
focal shift. I can I can reverse that if I wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to do this, but you can switch it to negative 100. And now when I do this, it will anchor this point and then inflate the rest of the dog. Uh, so you can just reverse the polarity of that focal shift, I guess you could say. But the cool thing here is if you change this to zero, basically putting this slider right in the middle of our focal shift, and then we use the anchor, that is going to switch the area of influence to the middle. So think of this, and I'm going to try to do a, a fancy graphic here. This focal shift slider, think of it as one anchor point on one side, another anchor point on another side, and this slider right here is determining where that area of influence is. So for example, if I undo that, and I switch this over to 100%, and I grab this anchor, this area of influence is going to be weighted down here. So of course, that's going to inflate. If I set it to zero, that's in the middle between the two anchor points. So now when I choose this, it's going to inflate down the middle. Pretty cool. Um, so that's that kind of function. If you can kind of visualize that, it kind of makes a little bit more sense maybe, but that's about it. And of course you can do that, uh, we, you know, here's your scale with a focal shift set at zero. So we'll go down here and uh, we can scale the middle of the leg. I kind of like to use inflate. Again, it, you can make things, well, you know what? Let's pull in a human. I'm gonna hit the comma key, go in here to project. Let's grab that male ZPR. Let's turn off floor, turn off perspective. And again, we're in our anchor brushes. We're going to use inflate. It works across symmetry. So if I want to thicken these thighs up, I'm going to tap an anchor here, tap an anchor here, set our focal shift to zero, have inflate, and I'm going to pull this one. And again, that area of influence is in the middle. So it's going to inflate those up. So I can go through here. We can do the calves here. And if we want to thin areas out, we want to make his arms skinny. We can go through here. We can shrink those arms down like so. Again, because that area of influence is uh, in the middle where the focal shift is, which is at zero. So that's basically it. You can use, of course, anchors, as you can see here, move, rotate, scale, twist. There's probably, again, I'll, I'll say this on every video for this release. If there's anything else cool that you can do with this, that's like, hey, why didn't you show this off? Put it in the comments. I can do a follow-up video and I can show off that cool stuff. Again, I'm kind of crowdsourcing cool ideas here, but um, for what it's worth, that is the new anchor brush updates. Actually, there's one more thing I'm going to bring up because it might come in handy with the anchor brush. So again, B-A-N to bring up your anchor brush, go in here to rotate. If for some reason you did need to go through here and mask out an area of your object, remember you can hit W on your keyboard to go into gizmo mode. And then as you control drag down your objects, uh, it will mask along with that object. And uh, the shorter you drag, the shorter that mask will be. And the longer you drag now in ZBrush 2024, the uh, broader the mask will be. I'll have its own video for this, but just an easy way to kind of go through and mask different areas of your object, um, you can do that. And again, and one more cool thing you can do, if you start, if you hold down control and mask, obviously you can mask down the object. If you're doing that and you let go of control, it will move the gizmo into the middle of your object and orient itself down the object so you can go through. So instead of having to go through, for example, and hold down control, and then hold down alt and position your gizmo and then go in and rotate again control start dragging let go of control and it will place your gizmo in the middle of the object and orient itself down the, the axis of the object